Welcome to Fluids, Volume Flow Rate, and a little intro into Bernoulli's equation. Can you say Bernoulli? Some questions to ponder. What are two ways fluids flow? What is viscosity? What is volume flow rate? And how does volume flow rate apply to pressure in nozzles? So there are two main ways that uh, fluids flow. There's laminar flow, sometimes called streamlined flow. And this occurs when a fluid's particles flow in parallel streams next to each other. Kind of like this illustration shows here. The molecules are moving parallel to one another one another and in these streams and that's laminar flow and that's when things are flowing nice and easily. There's also turbulent flow and turbulent flow occurs when a fluid's particles start to interact and uh, cause eddy currents that impede their flow. The currents start moving all over the place and uh, they create these little uh, eddy currents that uh, spin around kind of in a circular fashion. That impedes the flow of, of the uh, fluid considerably, so turbulent flow uh, is very resistive. It usually happens when you try to force uh, fluid to flow faster than it uh, really uh, wants to flow. Uh, fluids also have something called viscosity, and that's kind of like the uh, resistance uh, between molecules uh, within the fluid as, as they're uh, rubbing up against each other, kind of like an internal resistance. Um, and so the more viscous a fluid is, uh, the more it resists the flow um, in a particular uh, um, pipe or whatever. Um, so in our systems, uh, we don't want to be turbulent. And uh, plus that's really complex, uh, the mathematics associated with turbulent flow. So all of our studies for fluid dynamics assume low viscosity, so, the, so there's easy flow like water, and then um, also laminar flow where the, the uh, flow is streamlined. Uh, that keeps all of our equations uh, manageable. We should really add laminar and viscosity or viscous to our uh, ordinary daily language, you know, like a surfer. Oh, dude, that's really laminar. Or uh, maybe, hey, dude, don't be so viscous. So, dude, you ready for a little math now? Um, volume flow rate is our uh, first idea we need to understand if we're going to understand fluid dynamics. And that's what Bernoulli's equation is all about. Up till now, we've been studying uh, static fluids. Uh, and now we get to where they were somewhat stationary. Uh, now we're going to consider what happens when we have fluids flowing um, and they flow at a, uh, you know, a faster rate. Uh, this is going to be very helpful when you look at um, gases flowing in particular. Um, but it also works for flu uh, liquids too. So our first idea is an idea of uh, volume flow rate. And it's simply the rate at which a volume of fluid flows through a closed container like a pipe. Um, and uh, the cross-sectional area of the pipe change, if the cross-sectional area of the pipe changes here, we're going to see how the uh, speeds are going to change to compensate uh, for that change in area. So <clears throat> volume flow rate is simply the volume, how much of the liquid or fluid goes by in a certain amount of time. That's what the volume flow rate is. Now, looking at our illustration here with, where the pipe is uh, condensing down to a smaller uh, cross-sectional area here, um, something's got to give and the fluid is not what's going to give because fluids are incompressible. Well, I shouldn't say that. Liquids are incompressible. And uh, so we're going to look at our liquid right here. And uh, if our liquid has a particular volume encased within these dashed lines here at our starting point, that volume is going to be the cross-sectional area of the pipe here times the uh, um, length right here. That's the area of that cylinder. And that fluid's going to be flowing with a particular velocity. So we have a script V, and it's a lowercase v, to differentiate that from the volume. So this is the speed that the fluid is flowing. 
so that it, in mind we have this whole volume flowing at this speed this in order for that to move forward all of this fluid has to move forward and all of this fluid has to move forward therefore since the uh, pipe is choking down here to a smaller cross-sectional area the uh, length here for our volume had to increase to have the same amount of volume here as we had over here so the only way we can move that amount of volume through this smaller cross-sectional area in the same amount of time as this volume is moving forward is if we can move it faster so that's what we're going to see right here in other words our volume flow rate at one point in the pipe has to equal the volume flow rate at another point in the pipe because fluids are incompressible with that in mind if we look at our volume flow rate our volume as we mentioned before is just this cross-sectional area times this height if we're looking at the volume of that fluid in here and uh, so that's our volume and while we're at this point we can see that this length that the fluid moves from here to here that length moved in a certain amount of time uh, that's really the speed that the fluid is flowing so another way to represent volume flow rate is to take the cross-sectional area of your pipe and multiply by the speed of the fluid so if we look at our volume flow rate in this other section of pipe we can see that the volume here, length times that cross-sectional area, right in this area, um, and then that length traversed in this amount of time is the speed of the fluid during at that uh, point in the pipe. So these two have to be equal since the fluid's incompressible. And so you can kind of see here that if this cross-sectional area decreases, this speed is going to have to increase to compensate for it. In other words, as A2 gets smaller to keep equal here, V as A2 gets smaller, V2 has to get faster. And that's our equation we usually use for volume flow rate. This is the fundamental equation, but this is the practical application of it. And it's very useful. There's a close cousin cousin to volume flow rate and it's called the equation of continuity. Um, it is basically the same as our derived equation from the previous slide uh, um, except that it accounts for fluid density um, which is important um, because of uh, gases being compressible and so forth and so gases will change their nature when they uh, they won't just change speed, they also change uh, volume and so forth and, and density. So uh, it's, it's useful uh, for studying gases in particular. Or if you add two different fluids backed up against each other, which uh, doesn't seem like that's a very practical uh, problem. Anyway, um, leaving off with our volume flow rate equation, the only thing we have to do to keep this consistent uh, in fluid dynamics is if our fluid changes characteristics like its density we'd have to account for the density on either side of the equation as well so um, if the density changes then our volume flow rate equation uh, can change and become the equation of continuity like this this isn't used very much but uh, it is a little more um, exacting um, this is the equation that you really should memorize and know. Again, if you have the same density here and here, these would cancel, and you'd get back that equation anyway. Just didn't want to leave the equation of continuity out of the picture, though. Hey, we're uh, going to be checking out this uh, hose and the flow out of this hose, and then we're going to be condensing that flow from the hose, which has a... Uh, you know, a much bigger cross-sectional area, and then it's going to go into this side, but then that cross-sectional area is going to be squeezed down to that little tiny amount right there. And we're going to see how the, uh, we're going to see how the flow rate changes uh, because of the area, the cross-sectional area change between, between these two. Can we see that? I think so. You can see here, not much flow there. 
uh, hardly any at all. I don't want to get too wet or get the camera wet. So I'm not much flow there, but as soon as I put this on, you're going to see the flow is going to increase quite a bit. I'll back up a little bit here and let's see the difference in flow when I put this in place. Look at that. Very narrow parabola here. Wow, big parabola there. Look at that. So considerable flow rate change. Actually, the flow rate's the same. Considerable speed change from the water coming out of the nozzle. So now that you've seen a practical application of volume flow rate, um, new, let's use a similar uh, kind of an idea here to do a calculation based on what you just saw. And uh, so give this a go. And when you're done, come on back to the video and see how you did. How did you do? What is the speed of water coming out of the hose? Well, we use our volume flow rate equation. And what we're interested in here is what is the speed coming out? So we divide both sides by A2 here. Um, and when we do, uh, divide it by A2 here. And I switch sides of the equation here too. Then plugging in all of our numbers, we get eight meters per second. So the 1.2 meters per second uh, flowing in the hose is sped up considerably when the nozzle can, uh, squeezes it down to a much smaller cross-sectional area. And you saw that in a previous video. Now, hold on, here we go. Bernoulli's equation is next. Actually, we won't get into Bernoulli's equation in this video. We'll wait till next video. But to give you a little preview, Bernoulli suggested that uh, if we're looking at fluid flow, uh, like we have been, um, we uh, need to understand that fluids can, can flow at you know, pretty good speeds. And therefore, we need to take into account, since the volume rate of flow will cause varying speeds, we're going to have varying kinetic energies of these molecules as they're moving through the pipe. Not only that, but uh, in, in fluid systems, like if we have a water tower on a, on a high hill providing water down the hill, um, we have different potential energies, and therefore we have different pressures based uh, on gravity, uh, different heights in a pipe. So Bernoulli um, is going to be applying conservation of energy to a system like the one you're seeing right here in order to understand uh, fluid dynamics, how fluids, uh, uh, how the physics of moving fluids. And we'll do that in our next video. So hopefully you're able to answer our questions here. What are two ways that fluid flows? What is viscosity? What is volume flow rate? And how does volume flow rate apply to pressure nozzles? And scratch this parting idea. Well, it's not how fast, but it is uh, that you are always striving for continuous improvement.